Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here bringing you another video connecting the world of Scratch to maths. If you haven't already, check the description below for links to previous videos as this one is part of a series. In this video, we'll explore the expanded notation part of our space value game. So that means when objects pop around the screen, we need to be updating the variables down the bottom. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, here we are back in our Scratch project for space value, the level 5-6 edition. You will recall that we left our last video with the broken game. So if I press this green flag here and I start popping all these space objects, you'll notice that dang, all of our place values here are not updating and nor is our squirrel in the top left hand corner. So let's stop that and let's investigate why that's actually happening. So we're going to be starting with our 10th planet today. So we, what do we know? We know that when we pop planet, we expect the tenths to update because that's what a planet is worth. So I'm going to click on the tenth sprite and we're going to inspect that code. Uh, we know that when the green flag is clicked, we just hide it because we don't want them on the, the stage. So that's cool. We've got this code here that when it starts as a clone, it picks a random position, it shows it, and then it waits um, some delay and then it gets deleted. So that's not what we actually look for. We're looking for the code for when it's clicked and that happens right here. So when this sprite is clicked, that's the tenth planet sprite. We play that pop sound, yep, that happens. We hide it, and then we broadcast the message tenth popped, and then we delete it. So sound seems like this would be a great place to pop our code. We're not gonna pop it directly inside here. We're going to pop it in a more central spot where we can handle all the values, all of our place value scores. So we're gonna be doing that in our place value sprite. We're gonna pop it all them, the beauty of having a broadcasted message is that whoever is receiving that message will be able to handle it. Awesome. So before we get stuck into our code, what I like to do is I like to plan out what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to jump across into my Scratch Planner uh, that I use to help me. So you'll see here that we've got the stage um, set up and I'm just going to reveal a couple of more things down here. So we've got our sprites. We've got our variables and we've also got some scripts. Now what I like to do is I like to create English sentences first and that helps me um, figure out in my own words what I want the program to do and then I can use this as a starting point to translate it into scratch blocks. So let's do that. Let's start at the top here. It says that when the tenth planet is clicked, change the tenth score by, well yeah, we need to change it by a tenth, don't we? Every time it's clicked, we know that the tenths update by a tenth. Oh, that looks like a terrible tenth there. There we go, that one's a little bit <laughs> more visible. But something happens when we have ten of something. So we'll need to tell the game what to do when that happens. That's right, so if we've got ten tenths, that's a special thing in place value. So if there are ten tenths, so if there are ten tenths, then we need to regroup to a which way would you regroup it to? Well, we know that in the place value that when we're uh, adding things, we're actually increasing our places, our, our collections. So when we have 10 tenths, that's the same thing as one unit. So we need to regroup to a unit. And once we do that, well, we're going to be pushing 10 of those tenths across to here, so we've got a unit, but then we don't want 10 tenths in here anymore. We need to reset that back to zero. Okay, so and then we set the tenths back to zero. Great. So this is like our English sentence that we sentences that we need. Um, and now all we need to do is translate this into some scratch blocks. So let's just again start at the top and see if we can find some stuff related to uh, with scratch. So when the tenth planet is clicked, well we know where that's located. That's inside the actual sprite object. Then we need to change the tenth score by one. So let's go back across. We need to now receive that event. So we're going to go across to our events and we're going to grab our receiving block. And we don't want to know when our hundreds popped just yet. We're focusing on our tenths. And then they are right there. So we're on our tenths block. Let's go back to our plan. So we need to change the tenth score by one. So I know where one of those blocks is located. We're changing the variable tenths because this is our tenths variable here. There it is right there. And we need to, look at that, beautiful. There is a change block right there for us to use. Uh, we don't need to change the game time seconds. We want to change our tenths by a tenth. Okay, so we're changing our tenths by a tenth. Now if I press that, you will see that our tenths is actually updating, which is pretty awesome. If 
if I press this one, um, it will also update. So we know that that piece of code is actually working now, which is wonderful. Let's go back to our plan. Something happens when we have 10 something. Cool, so we'll skip that, that little part there. So if there are 10 of something, now if is a great word to be using when we're coming up with English sentences, because it sort of says to our program that we need to make a decision. If something happens, then we want, we want to perform this action. Otherwise, do this. So if there are 10 tenths, okay? Now, what I like to do uh, for this particular one is instead of using an equal to block, I'm actually gonna use a greater than uh, symbol because Scratch is a little bit buggy at the moment with the new version that's just been released. And sometimes it can skip over uh, when our 10 tenths is equal to one. So we're just going to account for the condition uh, when our tenths are greater than nine tenths. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So if our tenths, so let's just, let's just do it in, in that order. So if our tenths are greater than nine tenths, so we need a greater than operator. So there we go. We know that the uh, open area points to the, points to the larger um, part the larger side, so our tenths are greater than nine tenths. Great, so if our tenths are greater than nine tenths, well, what were we doing with that? We were regrouping to a unit. So I know that we have, well, we're going to, we've got all these nice events here. When I receive tenths popped, well, the nice thing that we can do is we can just broadcast a new event and we're gonna create a very similar block for our units. So why not just say the event our unit popped, okay? We'll change all this stuff for our units. So now we've regrouped to a unit and then we need to set the tenths back to zero. Cool, so that one's pretty easy. There is a set block back in our variables. We'll grab that again. We need to change it back to our tenths. And look, it's already preset there for us. So if I click this, when we get to beyond nine tenths, we're at seven tenths now, you can see that. There's eight tenths, there's nine tenths. I would expect this to go back to zero and then we should have a unit. Let's have a look. Okay, cool. So we went back to zero, but of course we don't have a unit yet because we are not handling for our units. So let's actually do that right now. The way that we can do that is just right click on this code block and duplicate it because we've done all the heavy lifting right now. So we no longer want to know when our tenths are popped because if we left this, we would just be getting uh, tenths every time our, our planets were clicked. So now we want to know when our unit is popped and we're no longer changing our tenths when our unit is popped. We need to change our units. We're not changing them by a tenth, we're changing them by a unit or the one. If our well, no longer tenths. If our units are greater than, well, we're just shifting up those values, aren't we? If our units are greater than nine, well, we know that we regroup that to a 10. And we don't have a message for that one. So you could go ahead and create it. So you could go ahead and say our 10 popped. Now that doesn't exist. We don't have our tens, but that's what we would do if we wanted to handle it. Now we need to go through and reset our units back to zero. So let's go see, I'm gonna click up to 10 tenths now and hopefully we'll get a unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tenths and boom, great. You see that? We went back to zero and then we included our unit. We just regrouped 10 tenths to one unit. Okay, so my scratching is actually over for this project. I'm gonna leave it to you to code the hundreds and the thousands because I reckon you'll be able to do that based on what is already here. Don't forget that you can duplicate these code blocks. Good luck. That's all for this video. In the next one, we're gonna be exploring connecting the expand notation to the score in the top left hand corner of our screen. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna stay connected to when I release more content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. Take it easy.